I'm Kevin Moore. This is Dart in the Shell, part five. Since part four, the Dart SDK has been updated to version, or build at least, 18.717. So you should make sure you have the most recent build, the um, integration build of the Dart SDK and Dart Editor. A good way to check to see that one, you have the Dart SDK and the Dart runtime in your system path and that you have the right version is actually using the Dart command. So if we load up terminal and we just type Dart, you'll see it asks for flags. But if we do Dart dash dash version, we'll see that we're on build 0.3.7.6 and the build date. So this is the version number, and this actually corresponds to the SVN commit number for this version. So if you want to go dig through Subversion and see what changes correspond with this release, you can do that. There's also been an update to the bag of tricks to correspond with the latest SDK release. We're now at version 0.14.1. I'm staying before, um, or I'm staying pre-release, pre-version 1 until Dart comes out with its first release. But that means we can go and actually update the bag of tricks in our project to point to the version that's actually hosted on pub instead of GitHub. So we'll switch over to the Dart editor. We'll go into our pub spec file. And right now we see that we have a path to git. We'd actually change this to pub.dartlang.org. And we can change our version to be greater than or equal to 0.14.1. And we can save that. We'll see that things are getting updated. And actually we can check to see the output. You notice we actually are saying any version that's greater than 14.1 should work. And if you open up our packages, we'll see now bot points to that version as well. So let's go look to see if our app is still working. So we're back in our terminal now. Um, we'll go into our tempter and into demo. Um, you'll notice some new tricks here with master. This actually is, uh, I've changed this uh, directory now to be in Git, and I hope to publish this quickly so you can keep track of the changes in this video. And maybe in a future video, I'll talk about how you can change your bash prompt to show off what's happening in Git and other things. Um, in fact, if we type git status right now, you'll see that I've actually just, the only change is I've changed my pub spec file. So if we do a list in this directory, we'll see that we have whatsapp.dark, dot dart, excuse me. Um, we had our logging stuff working, and this is still um, marked as executable. Again, the red color, some tweaks I have locally. So if we do um, an LT, we'll see that whatsapp.dart has the executable bit set. And so if we run whatsapp, we'll see that it works great. The other thing is we have the path to um, this executable in our system path environment variable. So if we type export, excuse me, echo, you'll see that this directory is in our system path environment variable. And that means that if I go to a different directory and type what's up, it still works. And obviously we can yell and we can add a greeting and say hi to my wife. And that all still works. Last time I promised we'd get into building some advanced features into our Dart application using some features in the bag of tricks and try to integrate more deeply into the Bash shell. And one of the ways we can do that is enabling tab completion for completing command names. So the example most people are used to is completing file names. So if we go into um, my source directory and go into GitHub, you'll notice I can hit tab and it completes names of things. It completes the path name for, Git, for GitHub, for instance. And if I type in bot and hit tab, it completes that. So that's kind of the, the simple way, the obvious way everyone, everyone is used to completion. This works pretty much the same in Windows and other places. Something else that people, I think a lot of people aren't aware of is that applications, individual new commands can actually register for this completion service. The example I gave a lot was brew. And so the command is homebrew. And basically homebrew, this might be worth another talk as well, is a way of managing packages for um, Unix packages for Macs. And I think it works on some Linux distros as well. So it's a great way to install, if you want to install the latest versions of Git or Ruby or Python. I have a custom um, script that I wrote to manage installations of the Git SDK and Git editor. Um, it's really nice. And so Brew has custom completion set up for installing things looking at, at commands. So I can go in and type brew info, for instance, and let's look at, um, what's a good example, Git. And so we hit tab here, and we're not actually doing tab completion against the file system. We're doing tab completion against the set of recipes in Homebrew. And so we can look at Git, for instance. I can type brew and hit tab and see a list of commands for brew and a list of flags. So brew, I can do, um, what's a good example here? So I can type home and hit complete that and type git again and hit enter, and it'll actually open the home page for git. And so... This is actually a really great set of features if you're building a command app or command line 
um, application that you want people to explore it and figure out what's available, or just if you're not sure what commands are available, you can always use tab completion. Git's another great example that has easy ways to list out available commands, to complete names of branches, and other things. To understand how command completion works in a shell, we first need to expand the notion of what we think a shell does, or the kind of things you can do in a shell. And this is actually eye-opening for me, and I've even learned some things in the last week, so I hope I get most of the details I'm explaining here correctly. I'm actually consider myself a relative newbie in the shell, especially compared to old Unix hackers. I certainly don't have enough facial hair to claim expertise in this area. Um, something a lot of people talk about when they talk about languages, and actually one of the first feature requests for Dart was to build a REPL, a read, eval, print loop. And this actually was my first programming environment. I learned basic in a REPL, which allowed me to type in commands, execute commands, define new functions, all just kind of in line in a terminal. And my first experience with what I with a REPL that I really understood in the Unix world was doing Ruby. And actually, um, IRB is the Ruby interpreter. Node has its own interpreter. Um, Python has one as well. And what I've started to evolve my understanding of is that Bash and shell environments generally also have a notion of a REPL. So let's go into back into our demo directory, and you'll see that I actually have a um, script here, bash test.bash. And so you'll see that I've marked it as executable. Let's look at the content. And you'll see that I'm doing an echo and, and uh, echoing out some variables. And so I don't want to spend too long doing a full demo of the, all the things you can do in bash. It's actually pretty extensive. I think most of what I talk about here will apply to Z shells as well, CSH. And again, folks on the Windows environment, I would love to see other folks take up similar discussions to extend either the command shell or PowerShell in Windows. So on a Mac in Bash, let's do a couple things real quick. So we can define a variable. So let's define a variable local. And let's set the, let's set the value to be some local val. And let's set a name for another variable and let's call it export. I'm actually gonna uppercase it explicitly, um, some so you have two local variables to find. And so if I do echo, and the syntax for referring to a variable once it's been defined is um, the dollar sign. So I see you get the value there, and I can do echo export. Now the reason I made export all uppercase is actually because I want to export it. And so this is one of the things you need to think about. When you start a process from the shell, there's actually a set of um, environment that an environment that goes along with that invocation of that application. So it's actually a set of things that go beyond just passing the args in. And you can customize those and tell Bash what to send along. And the way you tell Bash to send along very, um, values to a script is via the export command. So the first thing I want to do actually is run this script without playing with things. So we just run my Bash test script, again, with the contents, just to echo two variables. I can do, so let me do a dot slash and run this script you'll see that there's actually no values to find. There's no echo, no output from those two variables. Now if I export my export variable, again, hopefully not too confusing, and run my script again, you'll notice that this value actually went along for the ride. And so by exporting it, what we're telling it, bash is next time you invoke a process, add export to the environment variables you give to that process. And actually, it's very easy in Bash to see all the environment variables that would have to be passed along, all of them that are defined, by just typing export without any parameters. And you'll see a whole set of variables, and these are all going to be passed in with a process when you start it. I had to actually go through and make sure that um, all my custom flags and things for Amazon and keys and things um, were deleted from this. You'll also notice some funky colors in here. It turns out that RVM um, define some variables that actually define how to do coloring in the shell, which again is a more nuanced topic for later. And it turns out when you print those things out, those um, color variables, it ends up changing the color of the output. So that's why things are a little weird now. And actually just to, for uh, paranoia's sake, I'm gonna open a new tab just so we start out clean. Oh, back into the demo directory. So, and actually you'll notice another thing now that I've typed and created a new tab, if we type export again, or just run our script again, that that definition went away. So every time I create a new process or a new um, tab, invoke the, new, the bash um, interpreter, those variables go away, they're cleared. And that's why you wanna set things up in your profile file. And I talked about that before. So if I actually look at um, my profile file and it's in the root of my user, so tilde um, is a shortcut to my user directory, you'll see that I'm exporting a bunch of things. And the last thing I export is 
my path to my temp directory. And so that way, every time I open a new tab, this whole, this whole script is evaluated. But it's not run directly, it's sourced. And I'm gonna show you the difference. So again, um, let's run my script, my little test script. Let's create my local variable. So we'll do a local equals local val. And we'll do export equals export val. And let's run the script one more time. And you'll see that, oops. Oh, and nothing's set because I haven't exported anything yet. So let's export it. So we'll export my export variable. And now that we've done that, we've told Bash that this value should be exported to all new processes. If we type export, you'll see that if we scroll up, the value is defined there. And if we run the script, that export lives there as well. Now, instead of running the script, what we're gonna do is we're going to source the script. And there's two ways to do that. One is actually typing the source command and entering the path. And the shortcut is just using period. So we can do period and execute the command um, or invoke the command. And actually this is doing something very special. Instead of invoking this script and running it externally and then closing out, what we're saying is evaluate the content of the script in the context of the current bash environment. And when it exits, keep any changes that that script makes. So we source this script, we're gonna evaluate it, but you'll notice that the local value goes along for the ride. And so what that means is by doing this, the script is invoked in the current context and local variables come along even though they have not been exported yet. And one other thing I wanna show quickly is, so we'll go back to running it and you'll notice that if we run the script, again, the local variable isn't, isn't available there, but we can actually pass in um, environment variables in the command line. So if we run the script again, we do local equals um, value in the command. So the syntax is variable name equals sign. One, you can do other val equals foo, whatever you want, and then run the script. You'll notice that that, that variable gets passed along as well. And so if you're in the, um, the Dart environment and, executable, and doing executables, you can actually um, access those environment variables, and I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. So now that we understand a little bit about the difference between having local variables defined, that Bash actually is an environment, that we can export variables and those go, go along for a ride, we can now go back to talking about completion and how completion works. So along with defining variables in Bash, because it's an, a REPL, a read eval print loop, and it has notions of environment, um, you can define functions. And actually that is how um, completion works, doing custom completion. So let's go back to the example we gave first, which is how Homebrew does command completion. So in order to enable completion for um, Homebrew, you actually need to add some environment variables to your profile file. And I keep saying dot profile as the example. You should keep in mind that depending on how your system was set up or um, how you started things out, you might be a dot bash RC file and it might be a dot bash profile file. Um, and there's, again, I think I talked about this in a previous video. There's some subtle differences here. Read up on it. I've had dot .profile forever and it works great for me. Um, but there are subtle differences depending on if it's evaluated when you launch the cert when you launch your machine, um, if it's evaluated every time you open a new tab and other things. So depending on what you're doing, it really matters. But for me, it's a dot .profile file. So let's look at the top of my profile file. We're in the, my root directory of my user. And you'll see the first thing that Homebrew does it actually injects this script, is going into all the files in this directory, bashcompletion.d, and it says for each one of those dot file name. And so as we saw before, this means source this file name. So go to all these files and evaluate those files in the context of the current bash shell. So let's go into that directory and see what's there. And you'll see we have a bunch of scripts. Again, they're colored pretty pink with at signs. This is some of my custom um, um, bash prompt completion crazy that I'll show later. Um, and so if we look at all these files, we see they're pointing to a bunch of other places. Um, and they all have extensions .bash or .sh or bash completion. So let's look at the brew completion. And actually, we'll open this one up in Sublime. And of course, Sublime never quite acts like I like it to. There we go. And we might start getting a little intimidated. So this is the completion shell for Homebrew. And 
It talks about how to add it to your batch RC. Um, um, the prefix um, variable is actually something that Homebrew does. This is some custom bash execution logic for saying, um, evaluate the script and turn that into a variable or turn that into a string that you pass along to other things. But let's just look at the contents here. So you see a bunch of bash scripting. This is actually code that's designed to run in bash and it gives me a little bit of a headache. So ideally we can do some interesting things with our Dart app without having to write a lot of code in bash. But if, but if we go all the way to the bottom, we'll see this very important command, which is complete. And complete is actually a command in bash shell. And it's saying, um, do some default things first. So there's a set of kind of default um, completion logic that exists in bash. And it says, these are the fallbacks. But the first thing you should try is calling a function and the function to find underscore brew. And so actually if we go searching, we'll see for brew, maybe it has a, a space, there we go. There's a function to find that's brew. So what this script does is we source this script, so it's added to our bash environment. It defines a whole set of functions. And then the last line in it, line in it, it says, um, do completion for the command name brew the first thing to do is to run this function and do some stuff in this function. We'll talk about that in a second. And if this doesn't give any values, then just go do default completion, which ends up being completing file names effectively and maybe some other stuff. And actually there's a, let's go back to our main directory. So if we type complete without any parameters, we, we can actually see a list of commands that have completion registered. So we have brew has it, hop has it, Git has it, as we talked about before. Um, Hop is uh, a library in the bag of tricks, and we'll talk about that in a later video. So if we want to add completion to our, um, to our application, the first thing it looks like we want to do is we want to register a function to, um, so the bash can call it and do things when we hit tab after invoking our command name. And this now gets into some interesting things we have in the bag of tricks. So how do we define success here? or what would be an ideal solution? Well, it turns out that completion, doing completion in an environment, in a shell, in bash, is not magic. All it turns out is we register a function in the shell we're in, and the shell will call that function when completion is requested, so when a specific command name is typed in tab. There's a set of variables that are passed into that function, and then the function takes the variables that are passed in and figures out what completions to return to the calling command, in that case, um, in that case, bash. So we could go through and define a bunch of custom bash scripts for any command that do, do the right thing, but that doesn't sound like any fun to me. Um, and I was hoping I wouldn't have to. In fact, with another project I worked on, um, Hop, I started writing a custom completion script in bash and realized it was just really painful. So what would be ideal is to use the existing application we defined, so in this case, hello.dart or whatsapp.dart or any Dart app and define a custom set of parameters to pass in. And the idea is if that app receives those custom parameters, like a custom flag basically saying, hey, we're doing completion here, to go ahead and do the right thing for bash and return the right set of things to do completion. And if those right set of things aren't passed in, just to continue on and do execute normally. And now we can write all of our completion logic in Dart, which is much better since we already have our application logic in Dart, and still get all the features we get in bash. So the first thing we'd want to do is create that, at least a bootstrapper script, a base level script that is in bash, that knows how to um, define that special function, to register the function for the shell we're in, and then to pass the right variables along to our command. And after digging around a bunch, um, it turns out that this kind of script existed in a project for Node, um, call, or actually Node Package Manager, NPM, and this Node package is called tab tab. And they actually stole a bunch of work from the core node project um, to do one script that actually can complete for Bash and for Z Shell. And actually turns out Z Shell has two different completion logics, depending on how new version you have and what features you have. So it handles all that stuff for us. And I created a Dart script that will generate a completion script for us. So before we get too deep, I want to show an example here. So I've actually defined this script and it's in my path already and I'm going to tell you how to find it really quickly although I don't want to spend too much time. So if you have um, the bag of tricks and you're using it in a project like I just showed you, um, 
if you go into, if you go into um, your root directory, you should have a pub cache folder. Excuse me. There we go. And you should see hosted. These are all the things that you get from um, pub. And so we'll go in there. And we'll go into bot. And we'll go into version 14.1. And you'll see there's a bin directory. And in here we have some scripts. And so actually what I've done is um, I created a symbolic link from shell complete generator. And this just links to this existing executable that does all the work to do completion for us. And so if you, if you have added bot to any one of your projects, or if you're following along, you'll have the bag of tricks somewhere. You can go find the bin directory. Or you can always just clone it off GitHub to get that directory. Um, be careful if you're cloning off GitHub because I'm moving pretty fast and already have a set of updates past version 0.14.1. 14 so if you're doing that, just keep track of things out of sync. And if you want to stay on top of the most recent public release, um, it's pretty easy to add this directory to your path. And then you get all the stuff that's in the bag of tricks. And so the shell completion generator is in my path. Oops. Let's go back into our temp directory where our demo is. And let's type shell completion generator. And you'll see it yells at us because um, it, we didn't give it a command name. So we've had our command defined, and that's what's up dot dart. And we've done the work again to make sure that it works anywhere. So it's in our path. And this is really important because we want to make sure that the, the uh, command name is doesn't have any paths in it. So if we go back to our demo directory, we can to our shell completion logic, and we'll type what's up dot dart. And you'll see that we just get a dump, an output. And if we look at the output, we'll see it talks about how to install the script. It tries to define some nice beginning end things. It says where the target of the, or where the script came from that got executed and what time. And you'll see it does all this work to figure out basically which environment we're in. So if the complete command exists, it's, we're probably in bash, and it'll do a function that's compatible with complete. Um, and just like complete exists in bash, there's a couple other commands. I, th I think both of these are specific to ZSH. So there's compdef and this one. And so I'd love to cl claim that I figured all this out myself. And actually, it was just all shamelessly borrowed from um, the Node Package Manager um, set of code. So thanks to those guys for the work they did to figure this all out. Um, great about open source, right? So we have this generator that generates this script that looks a little scary, but we don't care because we'll just trust that it works. So again, we'll use some uh, bash magic here and we'll pipe this to a file. And this is the file that we'll want to source so that completion is registered. So we'll pipe this in to, let's do what's up completion.sh. Seems like a good name. And so again, the pipe command basically says, take the output and print it into a file. And so if we do more on that file now, we'll see that there's the contents of the output. So now we have this great completion script. So if we source this completion script, what we're doing is we're taking the function defined, the code defined in it, so it figures out and defines some functions, and it calls that complete logic. So if we source it, now we do the magic complete method and just do the list, we'll see that we have now registered a function for what's up. The function is actually named underscore underscore what's up dart completion. So if we try to run what's up dot dart, it'll call this function. And what this function ends up doing, and we can scroll up to look at it, is that it invokes what's up. So there's here's the invocation. Before that, though, it sets a number of environment variables. We showed that a little bit earlier. Comp word line point. This is the all of the words that are after the um, name of the, actually it includes the name of the command plus all arguments after it, separated. Comp line is the full string that represents everything that was in the um, command prompt when tab was hit. And comp point is the point in the line. And this is interesting if, and I haven't supported some of this yet, is that if you're in the middle of a command or you want to edit a, um, a flag or an option and you've typed out a bunch and you move your cursor back, it says where in that line your cursor is when tab was completed. And so all of this is passed into what's up along with the, um, the arguments passed in. So if I come in now and I type what's up and hit tab, you'll see a bunch of really weird stuff happening. So what's happening here is bash is executing our command with these arguments, completion dash dash, and 
what's up doesn't know what to do with it. It assumes it's just executing normally, and it's basically dumping out its output, its normal output, and Bash is interpreting it, and so you're getting these weird what's up things happening. But what's nice is we kind of have proof now that Bash is actually invoking our application when we hit tab. So now we're in, we're in an interesting spot. We'd like to be able to get into Dart now and see what's happening in Dart and be able to debug a little bit, see the parameters that are passed in. And usually the way we would look at debugging Dart or seeing what's passed in and printing it out or seeing what's happening is to do a bunch of print statements. And the problem, of course, when you're doing completion is if you're doing print, 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 what you're actually doing is you're feeding bash in completions. And so it's really tough to debug. And now you probably understand why I went through the, um, the whole video talking about logging. Because now what we can do is use the log logic that actually exists in Bash to show what's being invoked as we're um, trying to do completion. So we'll go back to our split window logic. I'm going to bring my other window over here. So we'll do one window there and one window here. We'll go back into our temp directory demo. And we'll do our tail-f into whatsup.dart.log. And we'll see that's running now. Let's go back to our Dart editor. And we'll see our What's Up app that we had before. And so we have our options here. So what might be interesting right away is let's print out, let's log the arguments as they're passed in. So we can do our log.info and we'll do args.toString. And we might even do a, um, a prefix here. We can do slash tab to have a little bit of space. And then there's a bunch of ways to do this. We'll just do concat here. So we'll do that much. And so let's go back and actually to make things easy, we'll split vertical. And so here's our log output. Let's just run what's up normally. And you'll see that we have no args passed in. Let's run what's up and do dash y for yell, greeting. Um, let's talk to my dog this time and you'll see the args passed in. Now let's call and actually do completion. So if we do what's up dot dart and hit tab, we'll see that the args passed in are completion, dash dash, and then whatever's been typed. And you'll notice every time I hit tab, basically completion happens, it changes the output of the command, and then we have more stuff kind of piled on as we're executing. Now we've done the work to grab the args that are passed into the process, but as we discussed before, there's also a set of environment variables that are passed in. And the way you access those in Dart is via the platform class, which is defined in Dart IO library. And so you'll see that in the platform class has a static property environment, that's a hash. So if we go back to our code, I've uh, pre-populated this already. I imported the Dart IO library. And then I grab the environment variable from platform. And just to make things a little bit more readable, I did a couple things. I grabbed the keys from the environment, turned it into a list, and then sort doesn't return the list. So I use, use a double dot syntax to take this list and sort it. So I have the sorted set of keys. And then I loop over those keys and I grab the key and the value. So if we go back to our terminal now and type what's up and just run it normally, you'll see that as I scroll up our log, that we get all the environment variables that are exist that were passed into the process. And one thing you'll notice is there's nothing in here about comp anything. But if we hit what's up dot dart, let me scroll this to the bottom and hit tab, you'll notice now we have a whole set of variables that we're defined in our completion script, that define um, the number of words that were passed in, the total, the text of the line, and the point in the line where the um, completion happened. So if we do what's up dot dart, and we do hello foo var, and hit tab, you'll notice that we get, if we scroll around just one second, You'll see that there was actually three parameters passed in, and the line involved was this line. So it has a process name and then the arguments that are passed in. So now we really have enough information if we wanted to to do a complete completion logic in Dart. Um, you can imagine doing logic that says if um, these arguments are passed in, so the arguments are completion dash dash, and that you know these set of variables are also defined, then we should go ahead and do completion. Um, but it turns out this is a set of work I've already done in the bag of tricks. Look at the documentation in the bag of tricks. Um, it actually exists on GitHub right here. Um, and if you actually go to, I'll just show you how to get here real quick. If you go to GitHub 
and then the bag of tricks. There's a link to the documentation. This is auto-generated. And so you can go in and look at um, bot underscore IO. And you'll see that there's a um, few methods here. The one we'll talk about right now is try arg completion. Excuse me, try completion. And what you pass in is this arg completer. And if you look, that's actually a type def, which means it's a, a function um, definition. And it says, if you give it a, um, it's a method that takes in a list of args, the comp line, a string, which is the full line that was passed in to completion, and the point of the, um, the point where the cursor was in that point, it will return back um, and return a list of strings. So we want to define a method that does this set of stuff. Give me a list of arguments, the full line that was passed in, and the point in that line, and this function should return the list of arguments to complete. So let's just call that. Let's call try completion, and you'll notice it also returns a set of options. So if we go back to our code, we see we're doing work here to grab options already, um, but it looks like this method takes care of it for us. We've already in, um, imported bot IO, so let's get rid of a bunch of our debugging code here. Let's get rid of our import of dart IO, because we don't think that's necessary right now. And let's figure out what that method call is. Let's just try completion right here. And this one's a method passed in. This is actually a, a method of this signature. So we'll just do, well, imagine we had a method called completer that does the right thing. And it'll yell us, yell us because we don't have that defined. And let's go down here and define that method. So once a list of string is now put, and it takes in a list of string args, a string comp line, and a comp point. So that's interesting. Um, let's pretend we don't know what this does. So we'll just do a bunch of logging to start with. So we'll do a log.info, and we'll log out the args that are passed in, the comp line, keys correctly, and the comp point. And just to start, we'll say that we are doing the completer. And that's all we're going to do in here so far. And actually, we probably should return something as well. So to start with, let's just return an empty array. So we deleted out all of our original logging code that look at args and everything else. And we're just getting grabbing our options out. And I think I deleted one too many lines. So we actually still want to keep our args around, which is options.arguments. And I think we're good. So now if we come in here, scroll our uh, output back out, and we just run what's up dart. You'll see nothing really interesting happened, although we do get this log output, which is we're checking for completion on script what's up dart. And we're getting this from this log output. So everything else has been from what's up. So this completion logic actually does its own logging, and it prefixes things with a good name. So we know that this completion logic is running right now. And if we type what's up dart, What's up, dot dart? Did I spell it right? I did not. There we go. And hit tab. You'll see that we get logging that says we're checking for completion. We're starting completion. Completion reported for this executable. The input arguments are this. And then here's our logging saying what we're doing here, what was passed in. And we see that the completions that were returned were empty. So this looks like completion's happening. And if we hit tab, Nothing's really happening. And so what this method does basically is it does all the checking for us. It sees what arguments are passed in. It looks for that completion argument, the dash dash. It looks for the environment variables. If all those exist, it tries to do completion by calling this method for us. And then it handles exit, um, exiting out the application by calling an exit method that exists in Dart IO. So basically it kills the process for us if nothing happens at completion. You can imagine doing all the work to go through and basically say, if arms are empty, then pass out all the possible completions that make sense for this app. So returning out yell or no yell or greeting and that sort of stuff. Um, that sounds like a lot of work. And actually, our arg parser already has a whole set of logic in it. And so that actually gets the other method I wanted to talk about in the uh, bot IO, which is try args completion. So you'll see this takes in an arg parser and returns an arg results. So if we get rid of this method entirely, 
and we get rid of a whole bunch of stuff here. So we don't need our options anymore. We don't need our args anymore. We still need our parser. What we'll do here is we'll actually get, we'll run this method, try args completion, and pass in our parser. And now let's go back and try to run our app. So if we do what's up dart one more time, we'll see completion was attempted. If we hit tab here, we'll actually see that a whole set of other um, logic takes place. And actually there's a, some really detailed logging that shows how the parsing happens. This actually is logic in the bag of tricks that goes through, looks at our arg parser, and we can go look to see what that code looks like. So it defined a command, help, greeting, yell. Some of these were um, negatable. And it does the work to parse that out. So if you notice that I went in and just typed what's up dart and typed H and hit tab, it completes the help command. If I do what's up dart and do dash dash and hit tab, it actually completes to all the flags that are available. So I can type N and it'll complete no yell. And then it's smart. So if I do another dash dash and hit tab, it automatically completes greeting because once you do yell, it knows that this option is no longer valid and it's the positive version of it is no longer valid. So we can do hello and hit enter. And if we just do what's up dart and hit tab, it'll just complete the help command. So this is code in the bag of tricks that actually, if you do the work to create an arg parser and you pass in this logic, you just get command completion for free. There's a couple little interesting side cases that I'd love some help with. So for instance, if you do what's up dart and hit, just hit tab, there's only one command available, help, and so it just completes the help, which is a little weird. And the, also the other case is if you exhaust all of your flags, so if I do no yell and hit tab again, it just completes help, or if I do dash dash, it just completes to greeting. And so I have some ideas about how to filter out um, and not do automatic completion if there's only one option available to let people pick this, these things out but it actually ends up being a really helpful set of stuff. And so if you want to look at a full demo that kind of shows all of this stuff in action, if you, again, go back to the bag of tricks, I'll show my own source directory, but you can clone it down yourself. There's an examples directory in the bag of tricks. And if you go into bot IO and completion, you'll see that there's hello.dart. And now you know why I named my whole app what's up because hello already existed. So I have a few scripts here to kind of see how this all works. And actually, we can look through the code really quickly. Maybe um, GitHub actually might be a really good place to do that. So let's go into the example directory here. Completion. So you see we have an app, hello.dart, which might look a lot like what What's Up is trying to do. Let's see if uh, GitHub can load here. And so it shows all the stuff about what completer is doing. It handles subcommands. Um, actually, if you go look at our arg parser, we see that we're actually getting it from a test directory. So I'm actually testing it somewhere else. But you can go find where that source code is there. And then I have a script that does the completion logic. So this is the output of that script for that we talked about before for hello.dart. And then I have a script that actually does initialization for everything. And so this is, again, sourced, as we discussed before. But this script does the work to basically make sure that the app exists and the completion exists. And then it sources and makes sure that the current path is in your path environment variable, so the, the command name works. And it sources the completion script as well, where I do that right here, so that completion works. So if we're in this directory and we just do source to our hello completion init, you'll see that we're sourcing that path and we're adding the path to our environment variable. If we echo out our path environment variable, we'll see that we now have that path in our environment variable. So if I type hello.dart and hit tab, you'll see complete works. I'm actually a little bit silly with it. So you see I have my full help output here. If I do hello.dart help, I actually type assistance. So it's actually completing subcommands because the help command has a subcommand assistance. You can see that I can pass parameters into help. So in this case, I can yell um, I can yell when I'm calling the help command, so I can get crazy and do hello.dart, help, and then do um, yell. And you'll see that now help is yelling at me. Um, and it's actually a really um, helpful set of stuff. Um, another example that I support is this notion of options with allowed values. So again, let me type help without my yelling. So there's a salutation. So if I do um, hello.dart and I type dash dash s for salutation, 
you'll see now I'm actually completing not only the flag, but the options in the flag. So if I type M, it completes to that set of stuff. If I do MR further and hit tab again, now do double dash. You'll notice that salutation is not presented as an option now because we've exhausted that option. So it really does a whole set of interesting stuff. So if you want to see kind of a full end-to-end -end example, go look at this example directory in the bag of tricks, which is really nice. If you want to kind of understand the method and, and uh, what's available, again, it's in the bot.io library in the bag of tricks, and it's try arg completion. And if you want to just do your own kind of completion logic and not use arg parser, um, this try completion method kind of does the root set of things that are really straightforward and make, should make it really easy. So the three things you want to think about um, when you're building an app and you want to do completion. First, you know, make sure you define it as executable. Second, make sure that you have some way to get it in your path environment because you want it to work everywhere without having to do the dot slash or the full path to the executable. So put it in your path. Maybe it's more than three things. The third thing is um, use that shell completion logic, that script that exists in the bag of tricks, and that'll generate an autocomplete script for you, which makes, um, and then you need to source that script. And that will actually teach Bash that that executable has a completion logic. And then you can use one of these helper methods. So the simple low level one is try completion. And that'll do the work to um, parse out the right args for you and hand those over to a method. And so you can return your own completions. Or if you already have an arg parser and want to just handle it for yourself, you can do try arg completion. And again, this is all open source. So I'd love to find people that want to help me with this. Um, there's some simple things that I don't support yet that I'd like to, for instance, if you're doing dash s, excuse me, let me show the help again. Um, you'll notice that there's um, abbreviations. So you can do dash s instead of dash dash salutation. Um, and it'd be nice if um, the completion logic knew that if I did this and hit tab, I should complete with the set of options for salutation. So there's actually opportunity for folks to help me here. I have a whole set of unit tests. And I think this is a really helpful set of things to make um, doing dark code in the shell much, much easier. So if you have questions, please let me know. Um, add comments to the video. I'd love to continue this discussion. And next time, I'm pretty sure I'll get into Hop and what ha Hop does in the bag of tricks. Um, thanks for watching this very long video. I hope you found it informative. Um, please stay in touch.